Mark Payne is used to dealing with danger. For decades, he's fished for abalone along the south coast, regularly coming face to face with white sharks. But nothing prepared him for the vicious attacks he says he and his family faced after taking on the contract for the McGowan government's smart drumline trial in Gracetown. The level I was targeted at was beyond um, social media. It was it, it became very personal. Um, you know, people were coming to where I live. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was well, well beyond what I thought it would be. Mr Payne believes people targeted his family because it was easier than confronting the state government. When the shark gets caught, that gets pulled out. But it was the harassment of his school-aged children that was most upsetting. My children rocking up in a town for the first time, brand new to school and having to get on the bus when there's camera crews and drones and, and uh, all this activity happening. Mark Payne's family moved back to Esperance halfway through the trial, in part because of the abuse. The smart drumline trial ended in May after catching just two white sharks in as many years. Surfer Dave Pearson experienced similar harassment on social media after being bitten by a shark at this New South Wales beach in 2011. He was still in hospital when it started. One of the comments was, I, I, I wish you'd have died and then we wouldn't have to deal with you. And, and I was, like, blown away. The unexpected abuse helped drive him to form Bite Club, a support group for shark attack victims and their families. After a shark attack, you can go through some very tough mental times to start off with. And um, when you start getting the online abuse, um, it gets a bit heavy. And um, we've had two of our members through online abuse nearly um, take their own lives. So it's... It's very important to me that we, we try and stop this in any form. He believes many of those that targeted him were affiliated with conservation groups and believes they need to be tougher in stamping out abuse from their supporters. I think it's up to the, the admin of the group themselves to, to pull these sort of things in line. Mark Payne agrees. Let's work together. Let's cut out all the, let's cut out all the rubbish, cut out the bullion. Uh, let's move forward with productive mitigation. A spokesperson for the Conservation Council of WA says while it is a peak body, it doesn't control the activities of member groups or individuals. It wasn't aware of any harassment or surveillance of the drumline contractor. Emily Smith, ABC News, Esperance.